Hey, hey, welcome. It is so good to have you here. Are you getting stuff done in your business or are you spinning your wheels? Because time just seems to be getting away from you. So that's what we're talking about today. So if you join, say hi, because I always like that. Uh, and if you're watching the replay, then welcome. It's nice to have you here. And if you've got any questions, then make sure that you drop them below. Uh, but today I did want to talk about time management. I did a Facebook Live last week and uh, it was all about asking great questions in your business. And so I did ask all of my subscribers what, I asked them a few different things and I'll put the link to that Facebook Live above, but I actually asked what is one of the biggest issues that you've got in your business right now? And the questions that I've got above here were some of the answers that I had back from my subscribers, which was all around time management. So I thought I would talk about that today and share some of the tips that I've got for you on how you can get more out of your day and really nail your time management as well. So if you've got any questions, if you're on live, then let me know. Uh, time management and productivity is one of the things that I love to talk about. It's totally nerdy, I know, but, um, but I do love getting stuff done. Hey Mal, how are you? Uh, so just checking that everything's working well. Uh, but yeah, so I've got a few key tips for you today that I wanted to share with you. Now, the other thing is, is that if you don't want to miss any of my Facebook lives, then you can head up to the top and go to following and turn on your notifications because I'm going to be doing a Facebook live at least once a week. Uh, and if you are on my subscriber list, you'll also be getting that as well because we like to repurpose content. Absolutely. Let's, let's work a lot smarter and not harder. So today we're talking about planning, time management, um, and I also did some Insta stories as well. Hey, Kesnia. Uh, I also did some Insta stories as well this morning on Connection Exchange. So if you're not following me, head over there uh, around how I manage my day and what I was doing today that was really going to help me get stuff done. And my morning has been complete. I got everything done that I was supposed to do. And so I thought, well, why don't I come and share this over on Facebook Live with you about how you can get more stuff done as well. So as I said before, I did ask my subscribers, what is the one issue or problem that you're facing in your business right now that is holding you back? And there were a whole lot of answers around time management, but I just picked out a couple. So the first one was, everything seems to be so important in my endless to-do list. How, what to prioritize and how to break it up to be less overwhelming, especially in regards to my 2018 strategy. You've come to the right place, whoever that was, because they were anonymous responses. So when I sit down with my clients and we do a business and brand strategy huddle, then we really look at what the plan's gonna be for the next 12 months. Now, if you are feeling like your to-do list is running you rather than you are running your to-do list, then something is terribly wrong and we need to rectify that immediately, if not sooner. So when you are looking at your strategy for the year, so let's think about it in three, six, 12 month increments, then hopefully you've got a really clear idea of what it is you want to achieve and when there are certain points in the year where things are going to be busy or not so busy, when you are releasing products or not releasing products, whatever it is that's happening in your business. If you're a product or service, then you may have peak times in the year. If you're an online business, then you may be selling digital products like I do. So really looking at what does my year look like and what are my big goals? What is it that I am trying to achieve this year? What is it that what I want my income to be? When am I launching, say, Play Big Brand Bold? When am I running workshops and events? And really planning that out is the first thing because then what I need to focus on is what's happening in the next three months. Now, I'm sure that you know that there's the 90-day or the three-month planner that you really take a look at what is happening over the next 90 days. What do I need to do in order to ensure that I'm, you know, promoting or marketing or talking about my product, my services, whatever it is that I'm doing. 
so that I can really focus on now. What you don't want to be doing if you're feeling really overwhelmed is that you don't want to be focusing on what's happening in six months or what's happening in 12 months. That can obviously still be on the calendar, but you need to focus on the now. Yeah, so that's going to help you to really not be too overwhelmed. It's going to help you to kind of come back into where you are, look at what you have to deliver. If I have got products and services or I need to get more clients in February, then what's my marketing strategy six or nine weeks before that? How am I telling my story? How am I connecting with my audience? How am I growing my audience as well? And obviously making the offer. That's like a whole other Facebook Live around sales. But making sure that you're letting your audience know what's coming up for you so that they can also be prepared. If, you know, if you're a photographer, then they can save up and they can schedule in for, yes, I want to do my photo shoot in three months. If they are thinking about doing Play Big Brand Bold, which launches again in March, then how can I save up or think about how I can budget for that in the coming months as well? And just think about, you know, how you can break that up in a way that feels really comfortable for you. So I know that right now I want to release my new training, which is all about how to make your inner critic your biggest cheerleader. So as I shared on Instagram stories this morning, I've got my calendar and I've booked out an hour and a half to write the script. I've booked out time to review and rehearse that. I then contacted my videographer and I booked him in for next Thursday so that I can record it. And then I contacted my web development support person and said we need to get these pages up so that when the videos are ready, we can go live. So I think that if you do not come from a project management or haven't worked in a more project management based type um, role, then really looking at how you set tasks out and then you actually delegate them or you execute them yourself is really, really important as well. Oh, Mal, I might, might have a chat with you about that inner critic training. That would be really interesting. But so what I really want you to do is have a think about what your 90 day plan is. Yeah, so that you don't have an endless to-do list. Um, you know how to prioritize what's coming up next for you rather than things that are coming up in six months. And then hopefully that's gonna really reduce your overwhelm. Because I feel like overwhelm, when clients come to me and we're talking about overwhelm, it's because they're trying to look at everything at once. They are trying to figure out what's happening, not only in January, but in December. They're looking at things as a whole rather than breaking them down into bite-sized chunks. So really think about how you can do that and hopefully that will really help you to not feel too overwhelmed as well. The other thing I'd say is that there are so many 90 day plans on Google, but you can also pick up my Your Best Year Yet planner and reviewer free off my website at theconnectionexchange.com. Um, it's a 24 page planner. There's a video that goes with it as well that really just talks you through what has been happening this year for you and then how do you plan for next year. So you can go and grab that free off my website if you don't have a planner that you can use as well. Now the second question or statement that I got back in my survey was how to deal with time or lack thereof, as well as how do I use time wisely to get the most out of my day. Now, the other thing I want to say about using your time wisely or feeling like you've got a lack of time is that I was having a conversation with a girlfriend a little while ago. We were having a coffee uh, and she just said to me, I don't really feel like I can play a big game in my business right now. I don't feel like I can do everything that I want to do because I've got the kids and I don't have care and I don't have this and I don't have that. And I totally get it. I've got two little ones, so I completely understand where you're coming from. But the question that I asked her was, if you can't play the big game that you think that you wanna play, what does a big game look like right now to you in this moment in time? So I think a lot of times we look at what everybody else is doing. We think, oh, I, I don't have time to do all the Insta stories or the videos or my courses or whatever it is. And so we feel less than. And what we need to do is say, what, can, what time do I have right now? 
What can I do right now that is not going to feel overwhelming for me, that I can manage and that is going to help me to get the things done in my business that I want to do right now? And it may be that it's a bit pared back if you don't have a massive amount of time in your business. And that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't always, you don't have to be running with the big dogs all the time because you're going to have different times in your life where you've got lots of time and other times where you're really strapped for time. So really worrying about the fact that you can't do what everybody else is doing. One is a waste of time, time that you obviously don't have. And two, if you can really think about, okay, well, I've only got two days a week that I can work in my business. What is, what is it that I could do in those two days? That means that I would get the most out of the time that I do have. It's really about changing that mindset. Yeah. It's not about what you don't have. It's about what you do have. So what do you have and what can you do in this moment right now? Rather than I can't do that and I don't have that and I don't have time for that. Yeah. So once again, it's a big mindset shift. So. I would really recommend that you say, okay, with the time that I've got, the two days a week I've got, I really want to make sure that I've got at least X number of clients a month because I think that I can manage that in the two days that I'm working. And so what marketing and what uh, connection and what events, et cetera, can I go to to help me just to achieve getting those two, three, four clients a month in the two days that I'm working a week? Yeah. So I think that it's really important for us to be really realistic and really kind with ourselves as well, that we can't be everything to everybody all the time. And that's okay as well. Um, how do you use your time wisely to get the most out of your day? And so as I spoke about this morning on Insta stories is that I do block out time and it is non-negotiable. So what I mean by that is that I use uh, calendar, well, I use Timely at the moment, but any calendar that you've got and my clients go and book in there as well so that I can see when I've got appointments and coaching times and things like that. But today I blocked the whole day out. Um, and this morning I was writing scripts and then I was doing my zero and then I was doing a few other things and I've thrown this Facebook live in cause I gave myself a break. So just making sure that you are really clear on what you've got in the diary. I kind of refer back to when you were working in a full-time job, you had your day mapped out for you. You had your calendar mapped out for you. And I feel like sometimes when we go into business for ourselves, somehow we lose that ability to be really structured. Uh, obviously we go into business because it allows us some freedom, which is awesome, but you also need to be structured uh, on certain days so that you can get that stuff done that you want to get done too. So today's been a super productive day for me. This afternoon, I've got fun stuff like zero. So my accounting software um, and going in and doing some product uh, alignment with my WooCommerce in my website because they're things that I don't have to think about. So the other thing around time management and different people may have different thoughts on this, but uh, I remember listening to somebody once around productivity saying that your brain has a certain capacity. Yeah, your, your brain has a certain capacity to do creative things, build new things, think up new things at certain times of the day. Now for me, it's in the morning. So for my clients, I like to coach them in the mornings uh, or before one or two o'clock before lunch, because that's when my brain is at its peak. It's when I am on the most. It's when I've got great ideas. I'm fully focused. I'm listening really well. And so managing your time so that when you've got bigger things to do that require more brain power, then set it at the time of day that you know you work best. Now, I know that some people are more night owls. So if you are more creative at night, then maybe that's when you set the time to get those things done. So actually not only managing your time, but managing your energy is super important so that you can make sure that you're at your optimal when you need to be during those different times of the day as well to get the most out of it. The other thing that I want to say is also planning ahead. So like I said, I've now booked my videographer for next Thursday. I've booked my day out uh, and really setting things up for you yourself so that you've got a deadline is a great way to get things done. Kind of think back to when you were in uni or school. Were you somebody that left it till the last minute? 
Oh, were you somebody that planned? I was a bit of a planner. So uh, I didn't really leave things till the last minute, but I knew when things were coming up. So you once again, manage it how you can. But I think actually giving yourself a deadline and having a day where you deliver something means that it comes off the to-do list as well. So I'm just gonna go and check some of the comments. Great. Hi, Lyndall, how are you? Yes, very true. Anita, would be nice if clients understood that though. Mine's over capacity most of the time. Yeah, and I think the other thing, Anita, uh, is that it is managing workloads and it's really looking at how much time have I got. I mean, I know that some of the some of my team, I say to them, I need this done. Is it possible for you to do it? And sometimes they say no, and that's totally fine. And I think it's just managing expectations with your clients as well, that if they need things done, then you need at least two days notice to get it, you know, to get it done. If it's really urgent, then they can obviously let you know, but if you can't do it, you can't do it. Uh, and so I think it really helps your clients to also plan as well so that they know that if I need something done, I can't just come to Anita and an hour later it's done. I kind of have that expectation set with my clients as well that I will get to things within a reasonable amount of time because they're not the only person in my world. And whilst I want to give my clients an awesome experience, I think you've got to be kind to yourself and manage your time as well um, and manage other people's expectations. So if you've got any questions, other questions on time management, then let me know. But I think the key things that I would love you to take away today is to manage your own diary so that you put in time for yourself to deliver the things that you want to deliver in your business. Don't try and bite off your entire strategy. <laughs> Don't try and bite off your entire strategy for the year in one go, it will feel overwhelming and it will never get done. So break it down into monthly, quarterly, half yearly goals so that you can pace yourself. The third thing is really knowing what you've got time to do right now and being okay with knowing that you may not be able to do everything you wanna do all at once. And that if you've only got a couple of days in your business or you've got young kids, then you can do what you can do, but don't create this burden on yourself to be everything to everybody and work a full-time job when you really don't have the hours to be able to do that. And also, like we were just saying, is manage your client's expectations. As you said, Anita, your emergency is not my urgency. So whilst you will always try and help a client out where you can, I think also setting the expectation that you need to book in for our next coaching session. Here's the link. I do that with my clients. Uh, and then if you need something done, I need at least two days notice. Uh, and then I'll let you know what the time frame is on that is also really important. So you need to manage your time. You need to also manage how other people expect your time to be available as well. So I hope that that was helpful. Uh, I'll be sending this out to my subscribers as well because that was answering a couple of the questions that subscribers shared with me in that survey, which was great. And I've got so many more questions to get through. So as I said before, if you don't wanna miss a Facebook Live, make sure you head up to uh, following notifications and turn them on because I'll be doing a Facebook Live every week, answering any questions that you've got and sharing some of my tips on how you can build a better brand and business. So have a great day and I'll see you soon.